bitches, help! Why are you sitting there? Have you ever reached this part of Half-Life? Is it a goat? Are we sacrificing a goat to Satan? That's not a goat. That's not a goat at all! Here you go. The power of the goat compels you! No! Double or nothing, guys! Give me a second crystal! And thought to yourself, what happened to the rest of Black Mesa? Well, abiotic factor seems to be there just for you, you crazy, crazy person. <laughs> Let's take a look at what the demo had to show for itself. So, just to be fair and balanced, I played this for a little over two hours. So the story is still ongoing for me. I plan to do a full playthrough with my friends when it releases. Bit of a spoiler for the preview, but it is very good. But for a quick breakdown of the demo's tale that I experienced thus far. We are in Black Me- I mean Gates on our first day. Who are we, you ask? Why only the renowned scientists... Amira? Ford and Greeman. <coughs> now, Greeman has watched over the tales of his hero, Gordon Freeman, all his life, learning combat and science, just like the legend. Finally, with a chance to prove himself, he begins his first day at legally distinct underground facility, Gate in what seems to be Outback Australia. If the opening scene is anything to go off. Guys, this is my new best friend. Almost there. It's Lance! But I think it's Australian. Guys, kangaroos! We're in Australia! Heading down, we see a quick interesting moment. Now, I don't know about you, but the scientific implications are either this creature is an unidentified creature or this facility is roiding kangaroos to kingdom come. We head into the facility for orientation, which involves various important subjects, such as climbing through vents. I, I, I'm starting to think it might be a mixture of um, Half-Life and an SCP the way it's going. <laughs> Like, the aliens are already here. Catching wildlife. Eh. Caught him. And how to give blood in a speedy and efficient manner. We could go through all the safety procedures, but let's just stomp on it instead. Oh, brutal. <laughs> and uh, just keep this between us for now. I'll, I'll buy you a beer in residence later. Free beer! Sorry about that. You know, the normal science stuff. We are also given a wrench, but somehow lose that before the game truly begins. While learning to plug in a heater, that's how good a scientist we are, we hear some chatter of issues from the guards. Chaos is kind of our thing around here. The elevator gets redirected into the cafeteria, and the game truly begins. When we arrive, we meet Dr. Thule and quickly learn that no one in this facility is overly cheery. I came down from level eight for a coffee and now I'm locked in here for God knows how long. He tasks us with letting Dr. Jaeger in. He's insufferable. Does anybody here like each other? Luckily, orientation has prepared us for exactly this moment. As we head through the vents and meet the first Uma, unidentified mysterious animal, which I am going to call the spider koala. Why? Ow! Using our keen intellect and Freeman style mindset, we deal with that problem. And about 10 more along the way. Arriving at the door, we spend some time getting equated with this guy. Now, this guy has all the charisma of a walrus on a night out. You're going to leave me standing here? That guy was right. You are a dick. So clearly, we need to help him. We make a crafting bench, and after effort, 
We managed to make a battery to repair the door. Not that it mattered as we are met with our next Uma. The danger dingo. You need to open the door now. <laughs> Who quickly gives this guy a peck on the cheek, putting him to sleep. He's asleep, guys. Trust me. This is exactly how Wara sleeps. At this point, you realize what the point of gate is. They are making creatures that the rest of the world says we should fear about Australia. Or, well, I mean, that's what I assume it is. There, 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 there's a whole story here. Um, put in emails and all this. I have ignored all of it. In the famous words of the Simpsons movie, I was elected to lead. Not to read. Dealing with the danger, Dingo. <laughs> Why did I put all my stuff away? I said, dealing with the danger, Dingo. We are now free to explore the facility. There are three main people to meet. Guard who's not thought about how the toilet situation is going to work. There's maps over there. But me, I'm staying right here. Hey, can I come in? You seem to have a lot of nice stuff in there. Guard who's been binging on the raspberry jam again. <laughs> Hi. I have seen death. Cool. And Engineer, who gives us an important task. But if you can find a power cell, we can use the forklift to open the door. Get out of here. Through the surface tunnel. I mean, I don't think you're getting out of it. Specifically you. The main problem we have is that most scientists are missing. Probably eaten. And the one we have is... Less than useful. God, what happened to Jaeger? He didn't deserve that. I mean, not really. Exploring a bit, Ford and Greenman finds the maintenance room and a mysterious portal. Imitating his hero, he steps in and... Let's go! I think we're getting a rest, guys. The border world, Zen, is in our control. That doesn't time. sound good. Well, not really. I died in here, and it felt like a good stopping point as we ended up in legally distinct zen. <laughs> so that was a breakdown of the plot. Now, to experience that plot, we had to do a fair bit. Let's start with the positives. There is a character creator. I mean, this is the demo, so I imagine it's a really basic version of what we will get. But basically, we get a few heads, hair, shirt, glasses, and legs. You know, all the things normal humans have. I must admit, it was fun to create a scientist with zero fashion sense. I mean, that skirt with that tie, madness. I am not a fashionista, if you couldn't tell from the way I dress. That being said, the advantage of this is only for multiplayer. And I have never understood making a character creator for a character we'll never see because the whole game is first person. Thankfully, we see Ford and Greenman in the inventory menu. So that makes me a happy chappy. God, I'm beautiful. Although, if I had one little complaint, it's that when you wear a hat, your hair texture vanishes. As a walrus with a full afro beneath my top hat, I understand... But realistically, it's an effect I hope they change on final release. Speaking of inventory, ever play Raft? Daisy? Potato Crafter, 1783. I doubt you played that last one. I made it up. <laughs> but you get my point. You are given limited slots that can be upgraded through crafting or finding backpacks. And you are given an entire world to demolish into component parts for your crafting adventure. One thing I do like is that you aren't given all the recipes immediately. You have to grab everything at least once to learn the recipe. Gives you a reason for exploration. You also have to research how to craft new items in a match the item to the slot kind of way. It's very nice, 
but doesn't have much, except to prove that Greenman's science ingenuity knows no limits, so long as it's within the game's limits. <laughs> There's a lot of options, but the one I'm most interested in is base defense. When you walk into your base, it's confirmed that it's a safe place. So that's going to be taken away later? That would be fun. Although if my skills are anything to go off, it'll also be how my game ends. Everything has durability, which is a staple of these series. It's a mechanic I understand, but I can't say I'm fully on board with especially with how quick things break. Yes, we can get a repair bench later, but you have to find an anvil, and good luck doing that early. P.S. For anyone who's played the demo, I know where it is. I just didn't get to it in my time playing. If I had to give one issue with the whole system, it's the lack of knowledge about resources. Going back to opening that door, I couldn't work out what classifies as tech scrap for the battery. I did work out it means calculator, but just having a little note under it saying that it's tech scrap is just a quality of life improvement that would have been great. I would later get frustrated with finding plastic as well, and I only found one binder that held it. You would assume that the bins or the plastic table would have plastic scrap, but alas, no. Oh! Oh, the calculator's tech scrap. Oh. Not strictly a complaint, just food for thought, really. Otherwise, the only other things to talk about involve Greenman. The first thing you have to do is choose your class. You have Big Hitty, the Smarty Dewey. So, are we a lab assistant, a biomedical engineer? Kins blah, blah, blah. That word. I'm assuming that's running. <laughs> But Ford and Greenman was never good at scoring high on tests. So hasn't actually got their PhD yet. And probably won't ever, given the circumstances. <laughs> what are those numbers? Well, if you go to the next screen, we have the traits screen. The more points you have, the more skills you can take. Some skills contradict other skills, and negative skills are problematic, but will give you more points to spend on positive traits. You can't select Fanny Pack unless you pick one of the two weaker classes, so this balance is well. So you level up by doing things. I know, crazy. You run, you get sprinting XP. You craft, you get crafting XP. You get attacked, you die. But there's probably XP there somewhere. I am lucky to be alive. I'd better and I'm eat dead. soon. <laughs> There's a whole XP grid that, well, just look at it. Uh, oh my god, look at all these skills. It is hard to look at, but exciting to wonder about where all those boxes will go. One skill that kept coming up was hacking. I couldn't find it, but it does have levels, so perhaps there's even more to this tree than we realize. Perhaps I didn't unlock the item needed to become the ace hacker I was born to be. Still wish the upgrade screen didn't look so... Intimidating. There's various injuries you can get on your journey, with the aforementioned blood donating without a place to store it. To the truly hilarious one, broken bones. Fall damage is a thing in this game, and Greenman and Forgy has a condition known as do now, think later. I think I broke my legs twice in the two hours. And you one of those times, it leg. was both legs at the same time. You have to craft a sprint <laughs> and wait for it to heal. Greenman waits for no bones, though, and continue to hobble their way through. I think you can re-break your legs, but I never got that far. <laughs> this game is fun, engaging, and nostalgic. It's truly what would happen if Half-Life came out in today's gaming climate. I can't wait to see what else it can provide. And next time, I'm bringing a group. This feels like it would be more fun with friends, and I look forward to enjoying it with peoples. Hopefully, this little preview has enticed you to check it out. Link to the Steam page is in my description. I'm not sponsored. Unless you are Deep Field Games or Playstack, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, my email's in my bio. I just feel like this game should be a smash hit when it releases. Catch you all later. Sayo banana.
I mean, it is only a demo. I don't expect it to be perfect. But... <laughs> what a way to go.